A grave capability of functions is they can make decisions about what to do or what to put in a cell. The if function is the most basic one, and it's the most common, I think, the most useful. Let's take a look at how it works. We use the if function when we want the value of one cell to depend on the value of another cell. That other cell can be on the same worksheet, on a different worksheet, or even on a different workbook. Here's a simple example. Let's say in this little worksheet here, if the total sale in cell B3 is over 100, cell B4 will display a discount rate of 10%. But if B3 is not over 100, the discount rate in B4 will be 0. So here's the syntax of the function and how we would write it for this example. Like every Excel function, it starts with an equal sign and then the name of the function. And also, like every Excel function, there has to be a set of parentheses. Now, the first argument is the condition. In this example, the condition is B3 is greater than 100. It's like a question. Is B3 greater than 100? True or false? And this is the first time in this course we're seeing a function that has more than one argument. And when that happens, you separate each argument with a comma. So after the condition, we literally type in a comma. Now, the second argument is what do we want to display if the condition is true? So in this example, the value if true is 10%. And if you want to write it as 0.1 or 0.10 instead of 10 and a percent sign, that's perfectly fine. And after you have that value if true, you type in another comma because we want to put in the third argument. And the third argument is what do we want to display if the condition is false? Now, in this example, if it's false that B3 is greater than 100, we don't want a discount, so the value is going to be zero. So keep in mind that this function is what goes inside cell B4. So in cell B4, either a true value gets inserted or a false value is going to get inserted. So that's how this function will be able to insert one of two different values in that cell. So let's go and use this on a worksheet. The worksheet I have open is called if statement, and you'll find it in the chapter three folder of the exercise files. And this is similar to other worksheets we saw previously. We have names, we have states, what the customer is buying, price per pound, how many pounds in the total sale. So what we want to do is make sure that any order that is coming from the state of New Jersey gets a 7% sales tax. But if the order is coming from a different state, there is no sales tax applied. So let's put the sales tax off to the side where it won't get printed out. I'll just click over here in cell L2, and I will type NJ tax, hit the tab key, and I will put in 7%. Got to remember to return it, hit the enter key. So down column H, we'll put in what the tax is. And if you want, maybe take this header here and extend it over. Let's go over here into cell H5, and we will type the word tax, and notice that it automatically formats it. So here's where we put in the if function. So we say equals if, open up the parenthesis, and you notice that Excel gives us some syntax help. So the test is, does this order come from New Jersey, yes or no? So we're in row six, so we'll click on the state. So is F6 equal to, now NJ is text, so we have to put this in double quotation marks. So I'll open up double quotation marks, type NJ. This is not case sensitive, so you could type in an uppercase, lowercase, whatever you like. So that's the condition we're testing for. Does C6 equal NJ? So put in the comma, and now we'll put in what is the value of true. So if it's true that this is New Jersey, we need to multiply the sale times that 7%. Now we're gonna autofill down column H, so we need to make sure that this M2 that we're putting in is an absolute reference, otherwise we're gonna get a whole lot of zeros. If you're not familiar with what absolute references are, we did talk about this in the previous chapter and you should probably go back and watch that lesson. So to make this an absolute reference, I'll hit the F4 key on the keyboard, so that makes a dollar M dollar two, Stay fixed on column M, stay fixed on row two. And that's the entire value of true. So I put in a comma and now I can put in what is the value of false. Well, if it's false that the state is New Jersey, they don't get charged sales tax. So we put in a zero. Close the parenthesis, 
press control enter, and we can see this order is coming from Michigan. It's not New Jersey, so the value of the tax is zero. Now we want to fill this in all the way to the bottom. So put your mouse pointer on that autofill dot. Make sure the mouse is a crosshair. It has to be the crosshair, can't be any other mouse pointer, and just double click. And you see we go down here. So these states here that are not New Jersey get a value of zero. This state here is New Jersey. So it gets sales tax. This one here is New Jersey. So it gets sales tax. Now this is correct, but it's kind of messy, isn't it? Because we got all these zeros and only a few of them are from New Jersey. So what we really want is if the value is not New Jersey, in other words, if the condition we're testing for evaluates to false, instead of putting in a zero, we just want nothing in there. We want the cell to be blank. So let's do this. Let's get a little bit of practice. Click the first one here, the one we entered, and I will press control shift down arrow. If you're using Excel 2016 on a Mac, then you can just press command shift down arrow. And now let's delete. Let's put in that function one more time with a little difference. So we'll say equals if open up the parenthesis, the test is does the state equal open the quotes and J close the quote, hit the comma value of true is sale times the sales tax, hit the F4 key, make it absolute, comma. And now instead of putting in a zero, if the state is not equal to New Jersey, if this condition evaluates is false, we want it to put in nothing. So we simply put in two double quotes. That is a double quote, nothing there, and then another double quote. So right next to each other. And then in the parenthesis, I'll press Control Enter. So we can see immediately there's nothing there. Now, if you look here in the formula bar, you can see there's a function, so the cell isn't really empty, but there's just no value to display. And get the autofill dot, double click. And now we can see this is a lot more clean, isn't it? So we have a sales tax only if the state is New Jersey. Otherwise, that column is empty. So that's very nice. Now let's say the sales tax changes. Maybe the tax rate goes up to 7.5%, 7.5%. And then, of course, the numbers change. Of course, if you need to add a decimal, or maybe the sales tax goes down. When does that ever happen? 6.5% or something like that. So you can always change this, and then the values are going to change all the way down column H. And what's really nice is... Anything in that if function can be very complex if you need it to be. That condition could be very complex. It could be you could have functions in there. The value of true, the value of false, that could be very complex if you need. You could have entire formulas in there. So in the next lesson, I'll show you two other functions that combine the if statement with sums and averages.